Father, tonight we recognize that our identity, our purpose, our reason is all wrapped up in you. That it's not because of the things that we do. It's not because of our achievements, our fame, our fortune that we are anything. But we are something because you have loved us. And you have sent your son to be our savior and to include us in your family. And Father, tonight we recognize that simply by yielding our lives to you and asking that you would change us, that you would teach us, that you would empower us and use us to impact your world and your kingdom. We belong to you and we are delighted for that truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to invite you to take your Bible or your Bible app and turn to the book of Matthew, 5th chapter. As we're continuing our Are You Happy series, and some of you are going, why does he have a stool? It's because I don't feel good. Uh, Aw, yeah, I know. Go ahead. Uh, You can go ahead and offer up that sympathy if you want to. I can handle it. I just hope my voice can, uh, so I'd appreciate your prayers, and, uh, and I just confess I hate being weak, I hate being sick, and, uh, but uh, that's life, so we just deal with it. Hey, uh, while you're turning to your, uh, in your Bibles or your Bible apps or grabbing one of the Bibles out of the pew and finding Matthew chapter 5, uh, guys, I want you to do something. I want you to turn to one of the ladies around you, and I want you to tell them three words that you would like to be used to describe you as a man. Okay, three words. Here we go, only three, not a phrase, individual words. Ready, set, go. How come the women are talking more than the men? Ask the question of the guys. So, all right, that's enough time. Hey, the, the passage we're looking at is called the Beatitudes. We're talking about are you happy, and this is our study in how to be blessed, how to be happy. And, and beginning in verse 3, Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, here at Calvary, we believe that the Bible is the inspired, inerrant Word of God that tells us what to believe and how to live. And so, sometimes, uh, that means, since we believe the Bible, that when we read the Bible, we come across things that it says, and we go, yes, I understand it, I get it, it makes sense to me, and, and I want to do this. I want to live this way for my God. And sometimes... We read the Bible and go, what? Right? We, we kind of read it and we go, I don't get it. It doesn't really make sense to me. I don't understand this and, and I would like it to. And, and then, if we're honest, there's times we read the Bible and we go, no. I mean, we understand it. We get it. We know what it means. We just don't want to do it. And, and I think today's passage is one of those no passages, especially for the guys in here, uh, because it's Matthew 5, 5, and it says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. Um, meek is not generally an adjective or a descriptive word that most men desire to be used about them. I'm going to guess that in that earlier exercise, there wasn't any guy that used the word meek unless he was cheating and reading the Bible going, oh, he's going to ask this. I'm going to use this word. (laughs) So, ladies, what were some of the words that uh, your men shared with you that they wanted to be known by? Just shout them out. Strong, kind, scared of the dark. Creative, fun. 
Godly, okay. There's somebody who's like, Sunday school answer time. <laughs> you know, I think if you went out on the street, most guys would want to be known for being rugged, right? They want to be known for being strong, maybe brilliant, <laughs> smart, successful, right? If you're just like bold about it, rich, you know, fun, energetic, all these kinds of descriptions, but meek tends not to make the top 10. Maybe top 100, I don't know. But Jesus says that you're blessed, that you're happy, that you're going to be successful if you're meek. And we don't really like it, especially the guys in here. So we're going to talk about this tonight, and hopefully when you leave here, you're going to be okay with using the term meek as a descriptive word for your life, and you'll be asking God to help you be meek. So the problem with this word is the definition of meek. That's the, that's the problem. It's the definition. And, and as I was thinking about this, uh, I don't know if that was me or not, but I hope not. But as I was thinking about this, uh, I thought about uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, Princess Bride. And, and uh, <laughs> great, one other person likes the movie. And, and if you haven't seen it, just, you know, pick it up for $5 in one of the cheap bins because it's all over the place. But uh, there's a guy in there named Inigo Montoya. And, and he says, uh, you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it does. And uh, that sums up kind of how we are with meek. We use the word. It, it bounces around in our conversation. Jesus uses it, but it doesn't really mean what we think it does. And that's the problem. Meekness is not weakness. Please understand, meekness is not weakness. Uh, as a guy, and I grew up with brothers, and so uh, the last thing in the world I wanted to be known as was weak. I didn't want to be a sissy, I didn't want to be a pansy, I didn't want to be a weakling. And for the record, the Bible does not ask you to be a sissy or a pansy or a weakling or a little girly man. Okay? <laughs> Just doesn't ask you to do that. And, and, and we need to go ahead and we hear the word meek, we need to go... That's not what it is. It's not weakness. It has nothing to do with weakness. In fact, meekness, by definition, is strength under control. Strength under control. In the original language, I don't usually go back to the Greek, but it works here. Uh, the word that is translated meek in, in your Bible had this as its original meaning. So, uh, photo, please. Uh, oh, I don't have a picture there. That's too bad. Yeah. Those Clydesdales are meek. Because the original language, the word that we have translated meek in our Bibles, was used for a, an animal that had been domesticated so that its strength could be used for a constructive purpose. So the idea that uh, you would take a horse or an oxen and you would hook it up to a wagon or hook it up to a plow and use it for your field or use it to pull your cart or use it to pull your chariot is the definition of meek. Uh, I don't think any of us would look at those horses up close and go, that's a weak horse. <laughs> no, we, we, we recognize the strength in that. And, and so we go, wow, that's strength that is directed. It's under control of the master. So uh, I want you to understand that you can't be meek unless you're strong. That it's impossible to be meek unless you have power. So here's a couple other uh, images of meekness or, or how you can think about meekness. Uh, for instance, a river has a lot of power. And, and what do we do? We dam up the river so that it becomes a source of energy and a place for us to store up water that we need to live for us. So that river becomes meek because it's strength that is controlled. It's under control. And that's a great picture anyway, isn't it? So we're all like, I've driven over that bridge. I watched it being built. Or how about this? 
Here's another picture of meekness. And you may not understand what that is, but that's a laser uh, that's cutting metal. And, and uh, laser, as we know, is light that is directed, that is focused. And then that energy of that light is utilized in order to cut things or, you know, like I could ask how many of you have had, you know, laser eye surgery. It's kind of cool, right? Because that strength that is under control, that laser has become meek. Not weak, but meek. Now, my favorite, and, and, and I don't have a picture of this, because uh, we see this all the time. And, and, uh, and in fact, there's a, a great image of it sitting on the back row on this side right over here. Uh, and that is a man holding a child. Right? You going to stand up for me and just hold her? perfectly. Grand, come on, Grandpa. Great Grandpa. Uh, and, and, uh, and I want you to, yeah, see that little one? That's, that's, a, that's a great Grandpa right there. And uh, hey, they're applauding for you and the girls did all the work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so here's the thing. He has the strength to destroy that child. True? As a man, he's holding this, this, his, his little great-granddaughter, but he has the strength to hurt her. But instead of using that strength to hurt, he's using that strength to nurture, to hold, to comfort, to care for, to protect. That's meek. That's what meek means. That's why Jesus said, blessed are the meek. And, and, and in doing that, what he's saying is, blessed are those whose strength is under God's control. Blessed are those whose strength is under God's control, for they will inherit the earth. They will inherit the earth. Now, that's an interesting promise, isn't it? What in the world does it mean that the meek inherit the earth? How, what do we get from that? I, I mean, it's, it, it's kind of one of those things where we go, what? This is the Bible, but what does that mean? Uh, I think it means this. A life under God's control wins. A life that is under the control of God wins because it is a life that has a positive impact. That's why it's a blessed life. That's why it's a happy life. That's why it's a life that makes a difference because when we take our strength and we submit it to the control of God, then God builds our life in a way that, that we win because we're impacting the world in a positive way. Now think about this. Everyone in this room, everyone in this room has power has strength. Now, you may think that you are weak. You may think that you don't have any influence. You know how odd it is to take a drink while everybody's watching you? <laughs> Sorry, it's just, you know, it's the whole throat thing, but... <laughs> the, uh, but you have power. Uh, maybe that power is in your hands. And you're strong. Maybe, well, probably that power is in your words. Definitely the power is in your influence on the people that God has given you, whether a few or many. And again, I know some of you in this room, you recognize your influence, you recognize your strength, you recognize your power, uh, and, and others of you don't, but you have it nonetheless. It's a reality that you have strength. Uh, in, in fact, uh, I want this to, to resonate, so I want you to look at the person sitting next to you, and I want you to take turns, and I want you to is, say, and the younger one, say it first, okay? That'll make it easier. Just look at him in the eye and say, you are powerful. All right, now say it back to him. Now, why is that funny? You know, everyone in this room is a person who can be meek, but to be meek, you have to have strength, and you need to understand your strength. Strength is, is demonstrated in a lot of ways. It's the strength to produce something. It's the strength to accomplish something. It's the strength of influence on people's lives. So if you're a parent or a grandparent, if you have friends or family, if you work with people, 
Anyone at all? If there's anybody in this world that values you whatsoever, you have influence. And therefore, you have power. Right? You think, oh, I still don't have any power? Oh, yeah. Has anyone ever said, hey, where do you want to eat lunch? <laughs> where do you want to go for dinner? If they've ever asked you that question, you have power. You have influence. Because they're, they're going, hey, what do you want? You're important to me. You've, I value you. See, kids, little ones, they have a lot of influence, don't they? They have more power than, than they should probably a lot of times. Because <laughs> we want them to be happy. So uh, you've got power. And, and because of that, you need to think about how you use that power. Because strength without focus is wasted. Strength without focus is wasted. Now, a horse running wild may be beautiful, but it doesn't produce much <laughs> except manure. Right? Go, wow, look at that horse running there. It's a beautiful animal, isn't it? Yeah, but at the end of the day, there's just piles left behind saying, yeah, I was here. <laughs> and so an aimless life is one that is wasted. And, and we've all known someone who was so talented and they had all these abilities and all these brains that didn't use them at all. Isn't that frustrating? Because all they produce is disappointment. Because you look at them and you see potential and you go, you could do so much. And, and yet at the end of the day, all they really leave behind is manure. And that's it. See, strength without focus is wasted. And then strength out of control is destructive. Uh, a river flooding its banks causes a lot of destruction. That's that strength out of control. It gets out there and, and just takes things with it, tears it apart. So does an abusive spouse or an abusive parent. God gave them strength to protect and to care for and to nurture and to build up. And when that strength is out of control, then damage is done and, and people are hurt and lives are broken. An addict will, uh, that is willing to manipulate and lie and steal is strength that is out of control and it's destructive. Our words spoken in anger uh, are destructive. That's why Proverbs 12, 18, love this verse, says, Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. See, that's Scripture recognizing the damage that happens when our strength goes out of control and tears apart lives. So uh, here, I'll just ask you to confess. Have you ever said something or done something out of anger that later on you wish you hadn't? Anyone? Yeah. That's strength that's out of control, and it destroys. And then strength that is under control builds and blesses. Uh, the horse pulling a wagon or a plow is blessing the farmer or the person in the wagon. Uh, the horsepower that causes your car to move. That blesses you because it takes you from one place to another. That's strength under control. Uh, the river that, that is dammed up gives light to a city and, and provides electricity for us to, you know, enjoy air conditioning. It's a great thing. That's strength under control. See, each of, uh, of us has the power to make our community a better place, to bless others and to build lives. Here's the question. Will you choose to be meek? Will you choose to submit your strength to God's leadership, to live your life according to God's word so that he can bless your life? See, see that's the struggle because we already said at the beginning we don't want to be meek because we misunderstand the word, but we understand it's strength under control. Then we have to choose to submit our strength to God. And, and understand, this is not about a power play on God's part. Because sometimes we go, well, why does God want me to submit my strength to him? Because he's the one who wants to guide it so that it builds and blesses our lives. See, left to our own devices, we're more likely to waste it or to destroy with it because we have evil inclinations and we're just not all that bright. That's why the Bible always refers to us as sheep. Uh, and, and so God asks you to submit your strength to him so that you can bless your family. 
He wants you to submit your strength to him so he can bless your family. You see, God will show you how to love the way that he created a husband to love his wife and the way that he created a wife to love her husband. And, and, and God will show you how to bless your children, how to encourage your family. Uh, and, and, and we all know it's not easy to be a parent. <laughs> I can't believe there wasn't an amen there. Uh, <laughs> And some, some of you are going, yeah, it wasn't easy to be a parent, but I'm a grandparent now, and it's awesome. So, you see, but, but if you're a parent, then God entrusted you with, I think, the, the greatest responsibility that he gives anyone, which is to influence and shape a life up close. And, and, and that's a great trust and a great privilege. And, and in so many ways, we have devalued the role of parenting in this world. And we've handed it off to everyone else, and it's not our fault. And, it's not, and yet God says, hey, this is, I'm trusting this child to you. And that's why the greatest uh, responsibility that you have is to be a mom or a dad. That, that's why the, the spiritual definition of maturity and qualification for serving God begins with managing your household, with being a good parent. And so God's entrusted this thing to us called family. And he says, hey, look, if you will submit your strength to me, I will teach you how to love them so that, so that you can raise them up. I will teach you how to discipline them so that they understand consequences in life and so they can follow my word. And I will show you how to do this. Because every single time you encounter your children, you have an opportunity to bless or to curse. Every time you have an interaction with your husband or wife, you have an opportunity to bless or to curse. And when your strength is controlled by God, then he opens our mouth and we bless. And we take the actions that we need to to bless, whether they be to gift or to discipline. And we want to do that. And so God teaches us how to do that according to his word. Because reckless words pierce like a sword. But the tongue of the wise heals. And so that's what submitting our strength to God does because suddenly we go, wow, I need to be mindful because my family is not just somebody that I ignore when I come home. My family is a trust that's been given to me so that the most important thing I do all day is come home. And then I can bless them and encourage them and teach them and have a relationship with them that carries over into adulthood where they seek my counsel and my guidance and my encouragement and they want to be with me. So God will teach you how to bless your family if you submit your strength to him. And then he'll teach you how to build your life. Because God knows better than us how to build our lives. And so if you let God lead you, then your life will be successful. The problem is we don't always like the way that God defines success. And so we want to do it our way because we read blessed are the meek and we don't really want to be meek. And so we go out and do it our own way, and we, and we struggle with that. But if we live by God's commands, if we live by his word, it leads us to prosperity. Because God wants to teach us how to be people of integrity, how to be people who are faithful, how to be people who work hard, uh, because he created us for that. And, and you can try it your way, but it'll leave you wanting more. But if you let God lead you, if you submit your strength to God, that he will build character and he will impart values to you and, and, and your life will have purpose. So God asks you to submit your strength to him so he can bless your family and build your life and so you can impact the world. Impact the world. I mean, we already talked about an aimless life is wasted. Purposelessness, it, it, it's frustrating to the very core of our being. And, and so God wants to give you purpose, and he will enable you to make a difference. We already said, beginning at home and going outward. But here's the thing. It may not be the way that you envision or dream. And therein is the rub. Therein is where we have to really trust God, because God may not have the same designs for our life that we have for our life. His are better. Uh, for instance, in my life, I, I just tell you this, and I've, I've shared this before, but when I was a, a teenager and, and, and I felt like God was calling me to ministry, I wanted to do, you know, the music stuff. I wanted to be Jesse, okay? Not with the hair thing, but, you know, just... <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to be able to lead people in worship because 
honestly, the music spoke to me better than the preachers did. And so uh, I just encountered God in the music, and that's what I wanted to do. And I said, okay, this is how, where I'm going to head. And, and then I ran into the reality that I didn't have talent for that. <laughs> it was rather glaring, and people who love me told me that. And uh, which was a, a great gift because then I didn't waste my time pursuing something that I, if I worked really hard, I could have achieved glorious mediocrity. And, uh, <laughs> and yet God had a better plan. He, he wanted to use me in ways that he'd already gifted me. And, and I had to be okay with that. Uh, so, you know, our way may not be God's way. We have to be able to submit to him, our strength to him, so that he can use us the way that he wants to. And you may, may never be famous or powerful, even though that may be part of your dreams. See, again, going back to early in ministry, I dreamed of one day being the greatest pastor in all the world. Thank you, Jesus. And yet... God allowed me to pastor the greatest church in all the world. And see, that's a whole lot better. That's a whole lot better. And, and uh, so you really have to decide, God, I'm going to trust you with my strength, with my influence, with my abilities, with my power, so that you can direct it the way that you want to so that my life really will be blessed and happy and successful. But that means that you got to humble yourselves under God's mighty hand that he may exalt you, that he may lift you up in the proper time. So are you happy? Do you want to live a happy, successful, blessed life? then surrender control to God. Submit your strength to Him. Acknowledge that you have strength and give it to Him, and you will be blessed. Because Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Will you pray with me? Father, we are nothing without you. And we thank you that you've given us strength and power and influence in so many different ways and today we acknowledge that. And we also repent for, from uh, trying to use our strength and our power on our terms. And so today we, we gladly submit and yield our power, our strength, our lives to you. Asking that you would teach us and use us for your kingdom's glory. Beginning in our homes and spilling over into the rest of our lives. We surrender in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and worship our God.